scriptures that we read is going to line up with that, with that notion of us being in Israel. So, and this is going to be a two part because I started it, started working on this lesson. I'm like, man, it's um, uh, it's a lot more than I thought. And every time I work on a lesson, you know, I'm I'm, I'm learning myself as I'm doing. It's like, man, wow, you know. Scriptures that you've know, read a thousand times, you're gonna know, read it again. You're gonna be like, "Man, I never even thought of it like that before." So, one thing that I like to do is, um, you know, let everybody know that you have to really be thinking when you. In any of my lessons, you have to think. Man. You just can't just read the word off the page and think you understand. You got to really exercise, process. yeah, process and let the spirit of y'all do its thing. So. Uh, on that note, y'all open up Leviticus and 26 chapter and start there. I wish I could do this whole lesson today, but I can't. <laughs> Leviticus the 26 chapter. Leviticus 26 chapter. And we're going to start this off at um, verse 22. Uh, no. Start this off at the 21st verse. I was trying to cut it short. Let's try to start this off at the 21st verse. And if you walk contrary unto me, I will not hearken unto and will not hearken unto you. I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. But when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your, deliver you your bread again by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then will I walk contrary unto you also in theory. And I will, and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And you shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall you eat. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols. And my soul shall abhor you. And I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And I will not smell the savor of your sweet odor. And you know, when we think of desolation, we think of what? We think of emptiness. Right? Desolate, like nothing there. But that's not, and I'm going to show two places where it talks about this. And this is the first place here. Let's explain what desolation means right there in that verse. And I will bring your land into desolation, and your enemies which shall therein, which dwell therein, shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you. And your land shall be desolate in your city's waste. Right. So all of this murdering and stuff that's going on in our communities, wherever we live at, Jacksonville, Chicago, every place, that's that sword that we drew out of us. Right. And this lesson isn't about the curses, so to speak. There's so many different lessons that I could do in regarding the curse, but it's but it is it is about I just want to stay in the context about how we Israelites not belong should should not be in Israel. 
have no business in Israel right now. But go ahead. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbath, Sabbath as long as it lies desolate, and you be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest mm -hmm. and enjoy her Sabbath. Right. It said the land should be desolate, but actually you're going to find out that desolation means that it will be our enemies that will occupy the land. We we will be scattered among the heathen, as it says here. And as long as we're not out in the land, it said as long as it lies desolate, it shall rest. Um, go ahead. As long as it lies desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest when it Time I talk about there's a lot of not you want to use, but this is our father speaking, right? As a father, you you try to do the best that you can for your children, right? If they can be, if they can have their own place in their room, and you put games, TV, the table, and all that in there, you know that's good. You know your, your ch children are doing good, but then. If they do something contrary to what you have taught them, then there needs to be a punishment. And so you tell them, you say, I'm taking your PlayStation out, I'm taking this out, but you stay in your room, whatever, don't come out, right? At, at, at what point is it that you tell your child, well, whenever you feel like coming out, you come on out? Where does that happen? Who does that? If your father, your mother, your parents say, this is what you need to do, punishment, one week, two weeks, that's what it is. So our father had thrust us out of our land. And he did it in anger because we sit here, man, and we just cannot even conceive the evil that our ancestors have done when the father has did nothing but try to make us to be the top nation on this earth where we don't want for nothing and everybody was just supposed to look at us and be like man I want to serve their Elohim but we did everything contrary so the thing is that if he done bought us out of our land and told us very specifically how we would go back in the land. How would you describe an Israelite that be like, you know what, I, I, I'm Israelite, I know I'm Israel, so I'm going to go back in the land anyway. But you go back in the land, and you know that you don't rule the land. You know your enemy rules that land. See, I, I'm not saying nothing I'm making up. I'm just telling you the raw and uncut truth. Uh. 
There's nothing about that land right now. It's the land is defiled. Right. Anytime the Father speaks about the glory of the land, he either talks about before or he's talking about future. But right now, it is not the place where you can set up any type of kingdom. Like right now, you got the group out of Chicago. They left Chicago in 1967. And they called, they called themselves the kingdom of God. We always called them KOG. But when they started using the sacred name, they changed it to kingdom of God. <laughs> but it was the kingdom of God at first. And they had these restaurants called Soul Vegetarian. I don't know if y'all heard of these restaurants. They had Beverly City. <laughs> but, uh, one thing that they don't tell people, and it's weird because I have to know this because when I was, matter of fact, when I lived in Chicago, there's a library at our Chicago State University has their own library. And forgive me, I don't know the name of the book, but I was in the library and I had just happened upon a book that was written by one of their members. It was written back in the 70s. They had a copy of it. I don't remember the name of nothing. But it broke down how they left Chicago in 1967 and they went to Liberia. So they considered Liberia as the wilderness. And they lived there for, for I forgot how many years, a certain amount of years. And then from there, they went to Israel. But what they did was they actually shared the same prophetic doctrine that the Jehovah Witnesses had. And that doctrine was that in the, in the book of Daniel, it talks about 2,300 days, 2,300 days of Daniel. And it, it, anyway, it breaks down this whole thing, but how they how they worked it out was they put 2,300 for years, and they started off at the Persian, the, the Persian Empire, whatever, and they counted out the years, and the years fell to 1975. So the world was supposed to end in 1975. Wow. That's the doctrine that your witnesses had. That was the last time they predicted it, because they had predicted a lot of time before then. But that was the last one they predicted. But using their counting system they did, Ben Ami, he's the leader of the uh, kingdom of Yah, K O Y now. And uh, so they, they, so they did, so to make a long story short, they've been out there for over 40, 40 years now. And, and Israel, and he died. Huh? yeah, he died. He yeah. died about three, four years ago. Yeah. He died about four years ago, and uh, so the government put them where the government wanted to put them, mm -hmm. which is in the southern the gas, right near the Egyptian border, yeah. and it happens to be a nuclear plant there, and they put them there, you know, so uh. It's a whole lot of stuff to it, but the point is, is that it was based off of a false prophecy that got them there in the first place. A lot of people don't know that, but I actually happened to have read it in, in a book that they wrote that was published then. I forget the name of the book, but um, since then, there's been a lot of Israelites also that have since then went there. Um, one of the things that happened, like I know a group that went there about... Was that about six years ago when um, a lot of them had went there out of town talk and stuff? It was more than that. Huh? You think it was more than that? It's been almost 10. Uh, you might be right. You might be right. Uh, you got to go through a conversion when you go there. You know anything about that? I, I don't know it personally. Yeah, you got to be, you got to uh, go through a con conversion. You got the, I think they check to see if all the males are circumcised. And it's a whole lot of stuff. But I'm like, okay, if you have a belief, because they're not messianic in their government. Right. right. And so when you go through a conversion, you are contrary to being messianic first and foremost. But my thing is, your enemy ain't got no business converting you, first of all. Huh? Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Converted by the Jewish people oh, so to be a citizen in their country. So I mean, their state. yeah, they, they call it the state. You're absolutely correct. They call it the state. Um, and now I'm just speaking for myself. I ain't speaking for nobody else. To me, I 
like I said, I tell everybody, this is the land of my captivity right here. I can read all day long, and we're going to read a lot of scripture showing that the Father has placed us in the land of our captivity. Uh, so if I get pulled over by the police and whatever, whatever, my demeanor is that I use it 99 times out of 100, I try to be as respectful as possible because I understand the whole dynamic. See, because anytime that the Father put us in the position that we're in, you have no other way to be but humble and contrite because we're only here because this is the punishment that he put upon us. This is not our land. I personally have no respect for the flag, the con their constitution, none of that. But I try to conduct myself the way that I know that I can read the Father will have me conduct myself among these people in all fairness. So the thought of me going to Israel, which is my land, and I had to do the same thing there, I'm sorry, that don't make common sense to me. I'm not going to be in my land and somebody telling me what to do that that don't even belong there. Again, that's me. I, I'm not, I'm speaking for myself with that, but my thing is, if I can go anywhere in these scriptures and read that here, you gotta go into your land, but it's not gonna be yours and they're gonna do this to you I, then I'll be like, oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? All you gotta do is just show me one place where that's written at, and I'm like, damn, I was wrong. But it's not here in the scriptures. It's not in here. He tell us throughout the entire, this is what we're gonna look at today, how we're gonna go back into our land. All right? So here in Leviticus 20, well, what did we read? 43. 43. I'm sorry. Um, bear with me one moment. He says in 40 that if they shall confess their iniquity, it don't say you, it says there, meaning it don't just talk about me. Oh, I confess my iniquity, so because I did something that you haven't done, I can go back. That ain't what it says. Nation. Bro, it says there as a nation, if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I have walked um, walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies. So yeah, that 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 right there is a, a, a some consciousness for you right there, because if you look like me and you don't understand that you're in the land of your enemies, you have no consciousness about you. <laughs> you 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 are in the land of your enemy. Simple as that. Again, this is me, not nobody else. I don't care who sits in the Oval Office. I don't. I get tired of my people telling me how important voting is. This is not my country. These people will put whoever they want to in charge of, 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 of their country. Huh? Regardless. See, as a people, y'all, we have to learn, and again, it's just me how to function regardless of who's sitting in there. Right. Because every real culture, when I say real culture, I mean whether they're Indians, whether they're Jewish, whether they're whatever, Chinese, whatever, they, they don't care about who's the president of this country. They work together and do what they have to do in order to thrive here. Why in the world don't we see that? We don't even want to talk about, oh, you, you are insulting your own ancestors that died for you to write the vote. I'm like, that's funny. So did any Chinese people die for the right for them to vote? Did any Italians die for the right to, for them to vote? Thank you. Uh, what you're saying don't make sense. You know, I have ancestors that died for the right for their descendants not to have nothing to do with this country. What about them? I had ancestors that died because they refused to, to, to participate in the heathens, Christianity, Christmas, and all that stuff. See, you don't, you don't want to talk about those ancestors. 
You want to talk about the ancestors that had the slave mentality. You see, so uh, but he said he's telling us in the scriptures right here that this is the only way that we would transform from three fifths of a people to a whole people. The only way, because we are covenant people. And no matter how many generations been since, we are still bound by the covenant that we was created from. Does that make sense? He said 42. Then, oh, I'm sorry, I missed the important part here. Uh, at, at the end of, at the middle of 41 says, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they did accept the punishment of their iniquity. Okay, so we know what circumcision in the flesh is. I'm sure y'all know what that is, circumcision, right? Uh, for those of you who don't know, what I'm about to say, what I'm about to say. That you got circumcised at a very older age. Uh, right, exactly. I was circumcised. I wasn't circumcised at eight days. So I was circumcised at twenty-five years old. I was a grown man, and I was circumcised. <laughs> Why y'all laughing? You know he, oh, his reaction. Oh, oh yeah. He Absolutely. said what? <laughs> Absolutely. I had missed the Passover the previous year because you're not supposed to partake of the Passover if you're not circumcised. And I said, I'm not going to miss Passover next year. So I went and got it. Cook County Hospital, Chicago. Uh, but circumcision of the heart, because he says, if then they uncircumcised hearts be humble, what does that mean, Circ circumcised heart? What, what does that mean? Okay. Christianity would say, well, the father ain't dealing with the Christianity with the circumcision of the flesh. He's not dealing with that no more. He's dealing with the circumcision of the heart. <laughs> but we read the circumcision of the heart throughout the Old Testament, believe it or not. It mentions circumcision of the heart at least three times. That's not a New Testament concept. So therefore, circumcision of the heart has to mean the exact same thing. If it meant what you just said in the quote-unquote Old Testament, it means the same thing in the New Testament. Okay? So in other words, there was a time when I wasn't keeping the law. I wasn't keeping the Shabbat. I was eating anything that I could put in my mouth and blase, blase. Not being respectful of my neighbor. Well, anything that you could think of, I was guilty of. But like you say, get that heart circumcised and now you find that you have to do, you have to walk different from that ignorance that you was walking previously, right? He wants us as a people to comprehend this and understand this. And then the second part about uh, the circumcision of the heart, and he said, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity. If I go back to the land because I feel like I need to go there, I'm not accepting the punishment of my iniquity. I'm not. You see how, you see how, how simple this is? There's a difference between wanting to do what the Father said and wanting to do our own will. And just like I said in previous lessons, King Saul was good like that, man. He had the zeal. And he thought when he did certain things, he was doing the Father's will, but he was not doing the Father's will. 
he was doing absolutely contrary to what the father said. But, uh, and that's how some of us are. You know, the script, this ain't like in a one particular place in the scripture and you might have missed it. No, this is all throughout the scripture that we're talking about what the father requires from us so that he will bless us collectively as a people. Which is why we're told not to lean on to our own understanding. Correct. 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 And but see, that's what we do. We try to justify our actions just by philosophy, deceit, or whatever, but man, it, it's, it's, man, I'm telling you, you don't want to be on the wrong side of the bar, especially not in this day and time. Uh, 43. Oh, uh, 342, I'm sorry. Then will I remember my covenant with Yaakov, and also my covenant with Isaac, and, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. Now, when he says I will remember, I like that, because matter of fact, I wanted to turn here, but I'm going to turn here anyway so we can come back and finish this. But I like what, I'm going to show you what happens when the father remembers the covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Keep your finger here, but turn to Exodus, the second chapter. I'm telling you, when you read this, these scriptures line up on line, precept for precept, man, you will understand things about the Father that you be like, wow, that's 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 crazy. Okay. Uh, turn real quick. Just read a couple of verses there. And that's, that's the second chapter. And this is about the Esodus. That's, that's the second chapter. And pick this up at the uh, 23rd verse. I'm going to go right to the point. Second and, uh -huh. and it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Yahshua sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, <clears throat> and their cry came up unto Elohim by the reason of the bondage. And Elohim heard their groaning, and Elohim remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And Elohim looked upon the children of Yahshua. Elohim had respect unto them. Wow. And keep in mind the father's the father's concept of time is not our concept of time. And we're gonna we're gonna look at that for a minute. You know, sometimes we could be in this walk, things happen to us so bad, and we'd be like, man, what what am I keeping these commandments for? What am I doing all this stuff for? And I'm still in this same condition, this condition. I, 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 I'm done with this. I don't want no parts of this, man. I, I, I need to join myself to something that agrees with my spirit. Something that's going to make me feel good. I'm tired of feeling. That's what we do. But you only do that because you just don't know how the Father operates. The Father knows everything that we're dealing with. Everything we're going through, believe that he knows that. But sometimes you have to... You have to at sometimes take life and experiences that we deal with as a lesson. Because everything that we go through, the Father's trying to build us and take us to another place spiritually and mentally believe that. And just like you said in Matthew 24, those that endure to the end, the same should be saved. You're either going to be worthy of that or you're not going to be worthy of that. Because you know what you know to be true, but you want to act just because something is just happening to you. I'm sorry, go ahead. So we talked about um, the frustration of everything, right? Not just daily, the words, the things. All that. So, I'm going to say about those scriptures. Right. Because I know that the Lord Christ is capable, and that the Holy Spirit is capable, and that the God is capable, and these things. So I'm like getting myself out of that okay. stuff. Right. 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 Right.
But I'll admit, you know what I'm saying? I'm human. I have those thoughts. Right. That talking about. And knowing, like, okay, every single day is one day of time. It's really this. Right. You know? So it really is. <laughs> it really we is. We need to think about that for ourselves. Yeah. Like, what? What do I need to do? Yeah. Do I need to pur- like, purge myself. Absolutely. time always seems like it's the uh, end all be all. You cannot think past this moment of time. Whether it be at your job, whether it be uh, disputes between you and your, 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 your spouse or relatives or whatever, it's a moment of, of, of time. And the father knows how to get you past that moment of time. But, then you look back. Uh, and then you think about it. You're yeah, yeah, like, oh yeah. my goodness. Man, let me tell you, I done been through some stuff. I, I, I done forgot probably half of the stuff that I done been through that was like the worst thing in the world. Believe me, the worst thing in the world. Uh, but anytime that you are living in a society that does not reflect you, you're going to have those obstacles. First and foremost, when you are doing something different than what other members of your family are dealing with, you're going to have these obstacles. This is not the place where you walk in and then you be told something very great and very, it's not that, you know? And I don't know how to be a soothsayer, you know? Be like Sheldon on uh, Big Bang Theory. There, 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 there. I'm not like that, but I'm just saying. No, I mean the, the, the thing is, you know, we have to recognize what we're dealing with. Again, I, I'm always keeping you with Nick Cannon as an example because the thing is so oh. great. But I mean, the young brother had no idea where he would be at in having this simple conversation with Professor Griffin. He had no clue. A year ago. Uh, well, yeah, that was a year ago. But see, he made the mistake of reposting it. And when he had reposted it, and all of a sudden it, was, uh, it, it went into the right channels, I guess, whatever. But the brother had no clue, you know? And there's no telling where his mind is right now. I, I don't even want to guess, but I'm just saying that th- that is just an example of what you're going to deal with if you're trying to walk according to the most high and his truth, you're going to have to deal with stuff like that. And are you ready to deal with stuff like that? But again, the father, he, uh, even after he said he remembered his covenant, it was not an instantaneous thing, you know. It still was thing that he had to put into motion with Shemiah, a.k.a. Moses, he had to put things in, the, in the motion with him and get him ready, you know? And I like how the prince of Egypt depict him in this aspect, if you all seen that, right? That when he went back to the court to do what the father told him to do, he had to deal with the whole dynamic of, damn, this is a place where I used to be celebrated. You know, where I was loved by this person, that person there, but now they're about to look at me like I'm crazy. And they hadn't seen me for 40 years. It was 40 years since he had been gone and lived in Minion. So that's how long the father had this plan in place using him, which really was at his birth. So he was, the father already had this plan from his birth at least from his birth. But he was 40 years old when he ran up out of Israel. And then a whole nother 40 years in Midian. And now he's 80 years old and now is when he come back and talk to Pharaoh, who they said it was uh, Pharaoh Seti, is what they say the name of the Pharaoh was at that time. 
But uh, I just showed you that the Father's timing is, is not our time. Right. And when we try to think that the Father's time is our time, we mess up, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, so we know what happened here when the Father finally did remember. And so the way he functioned then is the same way he's going to function with us at the appointed time. So let's finish that up in Leviticus, the 26th chapter. Leviticus, the 26th chapter, and verse 43. And the land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbath, while she lies desolate without them. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despised my judgment and because their soul abhorred my statutes, and yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them, to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them. Wow. For I am Yahuwah, their Elohim. Wow. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Misraim in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their Elohim. I am Yahuwah. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which Yahuwah made between him and the children of Yahshua in Mount Sinai by the hand of Shemaiah. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. All right. Move right along. Move around me the fourth chapter. It's my favorite chapter in the are you saying that or are you quoting me? I'm quoting you. <laughs> I'm going to give you a vacation because you're going to pass too much. <laughs> I must wear your shirt for the 20th anniversary. Huh? I must wear your shirt. Oh, okay. For the yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Do you me the fourth chapter? Let's pick this up after. Uh... Pick this up after. Uh... Well, this is Shemaya talking right here. I like what he's saying here. Uh, start this off at the 21st, 21st verse. Yeah. You're on the fourth chapter, the 21st verse. Furthermore, Yahuwah was angry with me for your sake and swear that I should not go over Jordan, that I should not go in unto good land, which Yahuwah thy Elohim gave me for an inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan, but ye shall go over and possess that good land. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of Yahuwah your Elohim, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which Yahuwah your Elohim hath forbidden you. For Yahuwah your Elohim is a consuming fire, even a jealous Elohim. And I like, and when he says, take heed unto yourself, lest you forget the covenant, and the covenant is the law. You know, I mean, just think of a time past when you didn't know the law. <laughs> and it's just, just the stuff that you used to do. And you would swear that the stuff that you were doing, that you did, that's always going to be you. You will always be doing that. You never thought that you would not be. I mean, like me, I used to, I used to love to play video games. And I, and I ain't saying nothing wrong with video games. I'm just using that example. And I, I could never imagine one day when I ain't got a controller in my hand. Wow. I could have better to see for y'all, for y'all young people, there was a thing called the Super Nintendo. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was big time. That's where Street Fighter came out of, man. And bro, I, I was fiend for Street Fighter. There was you could not tell me there would be a 24-hour period when I wouldn't have a control in my hand. You know, since then, like at home, what we got a Wii, we got a PlayStation Three, or three. I know y'all like that's still old. Uh, and we have a Nintendo and a Sega and the Sega. And I've that never. Never played with it, you know. But I'm just using that as an example. So when you think of the fact of you know the dishes that you used to like to eat, for me it was catfish. Shout out, you know, catfish. But uh, I'm just saying, 
So the point when he says that uh, take heed of yourself, the thing is that when you start keeping the law, it, it has to become a part of you, right? And when it becomes a part of you, now you function in a way in which you, you, you detest the dynamic of not keeping Sabbath. Where at one time, the thought of keeping Sabbath was not really something that was pleasing. Does that make sense? This might not be all y'all experience, but I'm just that somewhere down the line, when you start keeping the law, there's something that you're doing that at one point you've been like, no way in the world, <laughs> no way, uh, no way, you know, whether it's you know, the diet or whatever, it's something, but when it becomes a part of you, that makes the whole concept of, what did I just read? The whole concept of it, um, I'm sorry, my page turned. Oh, yeah. Of not forgetting the covenant. Because now it's a part of you now. You see what I'm saying? So, so that's how you do it. It, 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 it. it just becomes a part of you. Uh, go ahead. 25. You were only 4 and 25. When you shall beget children and children's children, and you shall have your main law in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of Yahuwah your Elohim to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you shall soon utterly perish from off the land, whereunto you go over Jordan to possess it. You shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And Yahuwah shall scatter you among the nations. And you shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither Yahuwah shall lead you. Right, and again, like I said in the last, we're in just about every nation on the face of this earth. But we're the minority in all of those nations. But we're there, though. Few in number among the heathen. Okay, where, where he has sent us. Go ahead. 28. And there you shall serve idols, the works of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Right, and so, you know, you go into some of these churches, and some of these churches got these idols in their churches, right? But because nobody and all these people in the church understand what thus says the Most High, ain't nobody rebuking the dumb in their sanctuary for having this idol in their church. That just tells you that Yah is not there. Go, go ahead. But if from thence you shall seek Yahuwah your Elohim, you shall find him. If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. That's something else. Man, I mean, come on. That's just deep. He says, from there, in the place where he has sent us, if you seek him, you will find him. That's an amazing prophecy. How in the world can that be if all the people in other lands are serving Idols, but yet you're able to find him because you saw him. Right here. Huh? Right here. Well, but well, first is right, right, right. The first is right here, though. Right, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This, this you're going to find him here. The same book that's mm -hmm. in that church right. with all the idols and tradition and stuff, you're going to find him. That, if somebody tell me, ask one of them whether they follow something else, ain't nothing more powerful than that. Nothing. Period. Point blank. End of story. You cannot tell me anything that's powerful than that. But he said, but he, but he told us from the very beginning that in whatever land that we scattered in, if you seek me, I'm gonna be right. I'm gonna be right there at your fingertips. That that's that's right there. It's beyond it's explanation. But go ahead. And when you are in tribulation, all these things are come upon you. Even in the latter days, if you turn to Yahuwah your Elohim and shall be obedient unto his voice, for Yahuwah your Elohim is a merciful Elohim, he will not forsake you, neither destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he swear unto them. For ask now of the days that are past, which were before you, since the day that Elohim created man upon the earth, and ask, and ask, from the one side of heaven unto the other, 
whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing is, or hath been heard like it. Did ever people hear the voice of Elohim speaking out of the midst of the fire, as as you have heard and lived? And see, that was our that was our forefather's testimony that he's asking them about. And guess what? All these years later, we have a whole different testimony that we could testify about. Like, wow, he told us that he, we would find him and we found him after all that we done went through. That's a, that's a testimony, but that's not their testimony. But go ahead. Or has Elohim say to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation? By temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that Yahuwah, your Elohim, did for you and Mishraim before your eyes. Unto you it was shown that you might know that Yahuwah, he is Elohim. Uh -huh. There is none else besides Absolutely, y'all. You can both know. You can boldly declare that he is Elohim. And none else. Period. Point blank in the story. Moving right along. Let's go. And when he says that, uh, and when you are in tribulation, all these things are come upon thee in the latter days. In the latter days, we're in the latter days right now. This is the latter days. You ain't supposed to be in your land in these latter days. Right. In the place that he puts you there, and in, 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 in this in the captivity. Is where he's going to deliver us from, and it's where we're going to be experiencing all these tribulations. Because, see, their mindset is that, oh, this place right here is horrible. Babylon, this Babylon is horrible. I'm going to go to the land of Israel. And some of these um, um, uninformed Hebrews call it heaven, actually, if you ever be in a conversation with them. It's crazy. But ain't nothing that they're doing is according to any prophecy in these scriptures. First Kings, eight chapter. And y'all know I read this a lot. And it's, it's certain passages, I'm telling you, you can get so much out of the passages because it speaks to a certain topic. And then you read it again, and you're dealing with a whole different topic. Right. But it speaks to that too. Mm -hmm. But uh, brother hit me up earlier and asked me about when we prayed toward our land. And this was it here. Did you read it? No. Uh, mm -hmm. Tom, man, I asked his brother that hit me up. No, I, I didn't get, I didn't read it. <laughs> what are you talking about? You I said, brother called me up earlier. I called you. I thought you said it was something on Facebook. I don't know. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he asked me about it. Oh. First Kings 8 chapter, and let's go to, uh, pick this up at verse 41. And this is Solomon dedicating this temple that the father allowed him to build, the house of Yah, in our land. So this is the dedication. This is the middle of it. Go ahead. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of your people, Yashrael, but come out of a far country for thy name's sake, for they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and of thy stretched out arm. When he shall come and pray toward this house, hear you in heaven, your dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calls to you for, that all people of the earth may know that your name to fear you, as do your people, Yashrael. Oh, stop. I, you know, it's funny how people try to twist this, but it says what it means, and it means what it says. Huh? I, I, you can't. Twist and say, Hear thou in heaven, Father, your dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger, and the stranger is not an Israelite, call it to thee for, 
He said that all people of the earth, like how they try to twist for uh, Elohim so loved the world. Oh, brother, world, that ain't what the world means. The world means that they twist it. And right here, I guess there's another word for earth too, I guess. <laughs> Right, but it said that all people of the earth may know thy name. Go ahead to fear you, as do your people, Yashrael. Right, he said, again, he separated between the stranger and Yashrael that all people may know. Go ahead, and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by your name. Right, if your people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever you shall send them and shall pray unto Yahuwah. Toward the city which you have chosen, and toward the house that I have built for your name, then hear you in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no man that sins not. Right, that's right. Flesh and blood, uh, and some way or another, we're gonna end up being. I'm, and don't be, take this as a excuse. This is just a means for us to be mindful that we just have to be. Just mindful of, of allowing our emotions to get the best of us all the time. Allowing situations to get the best of us all the time. That's not what we supposed to do. But no, there is no man that's sinning not. Go ahead. And you be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy. Right, because he just told, Shemaya just told you that he was angry with me for your sakes. We just read that, right? Because he was upset. He was angry. And struck the rock instead of speaking to the rock like the father told him to. And he said that the father will be angry and you be angry with them. Go ahead. And deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. And we just read that. Go ahead. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captive. If they shall bethink themselves where? In the land, whether they were carried captive, go ahead and repent and make mm -hmm. supplication unto thee in the, the land, in the land of them mm -hmm. that carried them captive. Second time, go ahead, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so turn unto you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies again, which led them away captive, right. and pray unto you. Toward their land. He didn't say buy a plane ticket and go in the land. That ain't what he said. That's not what we read here, and we're not going to read that anywhere. He says, pray unto you toward our land. Go ahead. Which you gave unto their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and the house which I have built for your name. Then hear you their prayer and their supplication in heaven your dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people that have sinned against you, and all their transgressions, wherein they have transgressed against you, and give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them, for they be your people and your inheritance, which you brought us forth out of Misraim, from the midst of the furnace of iron. That thy eyes may be upon opening, that thy eyes may be open unto the supplication of your servant and upon the supplication of your people, Yahrael, to hearken unto them in all that they call for unto you. For you did separate them from among all the people of the earth to be yours, your inheritance, as you spake by the hand of Shemaiah, your servant, when you brought our fathers out of Mishraim, O Yahuwah Elohim. All right. Okay. Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Let's begin this at the first verse. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you shall call them to mind among all the nations 
Look at Yahuwah. Look at Yahuwah. Your Elohim has given you. Right. So again, he's telling us prophetically that when we have done this in the land where we were driven. We read that so many times at this point and I think we only need, what, 30 minutes of blessing, something like that, but go ahead. And shall return unto Yahuwah your Elohim and shall obey his voice according to all that I command you this day. You and your children with all your heart and with all your soul that then Yahuwah your Elohim will turn your captivity and have compassion upon you and will return and gather you from all the nations whether Yahuwah your Elohim have scattered you. Oh, wait a minute. So that's one criteria. It said that he will have to return in order to gather us. <laughs> right? Not somebody tell you, you got to save up all your money if you want to go to the land. Save up your money. Work hard to save your money. That don't even sound like anything we can read in the scriptures. He said he will return. And I'm going to say it, even though we're going to read it later. When he returned and gathered us, y'all, the whole world is going to know about it. See, our people over there that's in the land right now, they're, they're not sanctified in the land. They're strangers in their own land. Yeah. We have the emails that we should get to put out the email before they're there, you know, the so called, the so called Jews. Right. That they are actually showing their faith and telling them they shouldn't be here, calling their names and, you know, and all those things. And I think if that I, they said it was supposed to be in the land war. Man, if I showed y'all some videos of what's going on over there, it would trip you guys out. You guys out. You see this one video? Oh man, it's a sister sitting down, like you sitting down here. I think that was a Jewish couple, something mm -hmm. older, something like that. And the sister, the, the Jewish lady, she did some like did some and kissed her, something like that. She walked away, but the guy threw up on her. Yeah, yeah. He spit on. Yeah, well, that was that didn't look like spit. That looked like throw up. They were like, "What?" Y'all saw that? I, it, it was like, damn. I don't know what the story was behind that, but it was like one of the grossest things I had ever seen. Man, I was like, man. So again, if that had been me in my land, that would have made front page. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna tell you, my, my anger would not have ceased. Yeah. It would not have stopped. I'd have been in jail, letting them know that as soon as y'all let me out of here, it's gonna be trouble. <laughs> that's just, oh, that's just, that's just what it would have been. But I'm just saying. But like you, like you say, Cindy, there's a whole lot of videos that's going. But again, that's what you go to. Because you ain't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. you, you're, not, you're not supposed to be there. Simple as that. Everything that we're reading here is, is just y'all's proof that we have to still plead and repent. And not only for our own actions, but the actions of our forefathers that gather us in this. Because we, we, were, we were born in, 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 in this condition. You know, and there and there's a blessing as far as being the covenant people, but we're just not seeing the full extent of that blessing right now because of what we were born into. But it is what it is. Where we at? First of all, okay. If any of yours be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from there. Will Yahuwah your Elohim gather you, and from there will he fetch you? And know what? It's funny. I'm reading this now. I, it just caught me. He says, it "Just caught me. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost part of heaven, he didn't say if you decide to go to the utmost part of heaven. <laughs> he said if you be driven. So everywhere you are, you were driven there, right? 
and not with a car. Mm -hmm. uh, if any of you be driven out with the outmost car of heaven, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, in the middle from thence. Oh, from thence will Yahuwah your Elohim gather you, and from there will he fetch you. And Yahuwah your Elohim will bring you into the land which your fathers possess, and you shall possess it. Well, stop. He shall bring you into the land which your fathers possess, and you shall possess it. That's the only way you're going to be in your land. You possessing it. Not you going to get a visa, and these people stamping a visa, and then right now, you don't even have permanent residence in Israel. They tell you, look, bro, you got 90 days. Nine days, you better be up out of here. That's that's how that works. If they give you the 90 days to begin with. Go ahead. And he will do you good and multiply you above your fathers. And Yahuwah your Elohim will circumcise your heart. There it is again. This is the new covenant right here. Go ahead. And the heart of your seed to love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Right. And Yahuwah your Elohim will put all these curses upon your enemies and on them that hate you, which persecute you. And you shall return and obey the voice of Yahuwah and do all his commandments, which I command you this day. And Yahuwah your Elohim will make you plenteous in every work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your land for good. For Yahuwah will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your oh, father. That's, that's, that's good. That's good there. That's not... But we see the consistency of what we dealing with, why we're where we at now, and the criteria that it takes to be in our land. It's consistent. Mm -hmm. Psalms 83. Another place that I go and I can pull so much stuff up out of this passage. Well, I'm only in the context of what we read. Psalm 83. Yep. 83rd Psalm. Psalm 83 and verse 1. Keep you not silent, O Elohim. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O Elohim. For lo, your enemies make a tumult, and they that hate you have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and have consulted against your hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Yashrael may be no more in remembrance. So in other words, as we were a covenant people in our nation supposed to be doing what thus says Yah, you had adversaries that hated the fact that the father chose Yashrael, gave them this land that is above all lands, as he says in another place. They hated that. Go ahead. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against you. I like that he used the word confederate. But them Gentiles love that word confederate. There, there has to be something to that, right? He said they are confederate against me. I ain't never seen that word confederate used in a positive light either. I see that word confederate for some reason it's against us. Right? Okay, <laughs> go ahead. The tabernacles of Edom. Okay, so Edom is the first person, not person. That's another thing. Here's something interesting, too. Uh, every time you see the word Edom in the scriptures, it's referring to a nation. If people don't notice that, when you see the word Esau, it's usually referring to the person. Even though we know that they're one and the same, because like in another place, it says, Esau have I love, but somebody finish that for me. Same thing with Jacob. Every once in a while, Jacob might be described as a people, but not usually. Israel is usually always called 
Uh, yeah, it just a few times it might he might call us Jacob, but Jacob is always referred to as the man, just like Esau is Esau. The nation is rarely ever, if ever, called Esau. They're always called Edom. So when you read that, Jacob, I love Esau, he is talking about the actual people, the person that is, you know, first and foremost. But uh, anyway, it says, the tabernacles of Edom, go ahead. And the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Haggari. Okay. And just to refresh ourselves, who is Edom again? Esau. Esau. I mean, but who is? Huh? Yeah, but what? 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 What's oh, Jacob's brother. Right. That's what I'm going at. That's what. See, I, I think sometimes we forget that. But this is just this cat came out the same room we came out of. We got the same mama. That makes him a Hebrew. Huh? That makes him. A, that makes him a Hebrew. All right. All day long. That means that the language he spoke was pretty like our language. That's what he spoke. Right. Right. He, he wasn't speaking Italian. Right. Or yeah, we want to say that he he grown. Right. And he was right. He came from not the same womb that our forefathers came from. Okay, just a little bit on that too. I I, I like that you brought that up. You cannot. A, a, a person is only one nationality. The father don't deal with myths. He don't deal with myths. He don't say, oh, there's a church of the part, this part, that. It's no such thing. You are what your father is. Right. When Mizraim tried to destroy us because we were getting big, they tried to, uh, as my man said in Braveheart, they tried to breed us out. Mm -hmm. Huh? Kill all the male children and leave the females alive. Right. Because we're going to get the females. And whatever child is going to be is going to be a Mizraim. Right. E Egyptian. That's how the father worked. So they know they became Edom. They became Rome or whatever. Ain't no such thing as that. Right. You're only going to be one. Right. That, that, throughout the scriptures, that's what you're going to read. Scripture tell us in the law about how there was a young dude, I don't know how young he was, but he had an Israelite mother and a Mizraite father, and he blasphemed the name of Yah. And when he blasphemed the name of Yah, the people were confused. They didn't know what to do. They had been quiet to the father what to do with him. Because if he was an Israelite, they would have known what to do with him, but he wasn't an Israelite. He was a Mizraite. He was a Mizraite. The father said, hey, stole him. That we said, I think that's Numbers 15. I think he said, there's one law for all. There's mm -hmm. one law for y'all and yeah. for the one that's born and, and the one, it's one law. Understand. Right, but they didn't understand that because when he was talking junk, you know, I can imagine what he was saying. People are like, damn, how did I get here? And trees and, and thirst and in my land, you was my slave. I, every, I can imagine what that conversation would have been like. You know, and he blasphemed Yah because he had these real pretty, elegant idols that he worshipped. You know, that in his mind gave him the best of everything. They was on top. And now I'm out here in this forest, wilderness, with all these people. Which in my mind is more wicked than my people, but that's another lesson. I can just imagine this conversation. You know, but you know, and as long as he said stuff like that, he probably would have been cool. But when he threw the name of Yah in there, now he done messed up. I mean, he messed up. In this one, in uh -huh. that verse, that verse six, like they quote Edom and this man, all those, all those who they name in the party are this That's one. right, bro. That's right. But it's they my, right. Call them different. But um, they they the same because. Wait, wait, what, did he, what did you say? You said they were the Hebrew. Yeah, they Hebrew. Hebrew. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hebrew. Right. Yeah, they all are. But you know, people this day were saying, "Well, no, um, Ishmael is not, but his dad is a Hebrew." Right. You okay. know, it, it's right. Like this, um, that's why now the DNA goes on the father's behalf. 
Not your mother, but it grows on your Right, that's the seed. The, the man carries the seed. Right. Plants that seed wherever it's planted. What comes out that seed is the father. So that's the twisted part because the Jewish right. say they, they all rely on the mom's side. Right. So they say, whoever's your mom, if your mom's Jewish, then you are Jewish. Right. Which now verifies my dad's not Jewish, so therefore I'm not Jewish. <laughs> oh, I didn't know, I did not know that. Right. I did not know that. And I kind of feel relieved a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed by that. I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I did not know that. Damn. But I was raised. Right. Damn, he just showed me something. That's deep. I always do it. But I see now. Well, technically, they're all Gentiles anyway. Yeah, you know what? That's true. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, okay, so yeah. Let's get to, I ain't got to the point yet. So skip down, though. Skip down to verse 12. Who said, let us take to ourselves the house of Elohim in possession. Right. I just want to read that to show you that this has always been the plan of the nations to take the house of God in their possession. And it's funny because the quote of he said, who said, let us take the to ourselves the house of Elohim in possession. Kind of like something I said a while back, how people serve their idols by tradition. But they know subconsciously that who they serve and ain't really the truth. I got a partner here, Hebrew, and you don't want to mess with him when it comes down to the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? It's like they do their thing, but if they meet a Hebrew and they talk to him and they go into the super, they, they, they know that. Now, if they didn't know before, it's like, damn, I ain't, I ain't really in this truth. I ain't really in the truth. But they keep going with the traditions because they were just used to it. So here, yeah, they, they called it Let's take the house of Elohim. In other words, so y'all don't got no house of your Elohim. The house of Elohim ain't among the, 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 the Philistines or whatever. You see what I'm saying? They know that all they got is our idols. But we want to take what Israel got. They got the real deal. Okay. I'm going to read. I'm reading this just to get to a, a, a specific point. But the point is, is that. They succeeded in taking the house of Elohim. That's the point. They always wanted to do it, and eventually they got it. If you're going to read that, let me see. Uh, let's go into uh, Ezekiel, the 11th chapter. Ezekiel, the 11th chapter. Yes, I am. You know what? Bear with me one moment. Just bear with me one moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Ezekiel uh, 11 chapter. Pick this up at the 14th verse. Ezekiel 11 and 14. Uh-huh. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Yahshua, holy are they unto, unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get ye far from, uh, from Yahuwah. Unto us is this land given in possession. Right. And our, our brothers eat them, by the way. Get, get y'all up out of here. Unto us is this land given in possession. Go ahead. Therefore say, Thus said Yahuwah Elohim, although I have cast them far off among the heathens, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries 
when they shall come. Right, and that goes into the whole thing that when you seek me in those places where I have scattered you, you're going to find me. So here he said that he will be to us a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. And he is. I don't, I don't know if you all have had this experience, but sometimes when you're in certain situations and you step outside of yourself and let the spirit of Yah go before you, the whole situation becomes better. If you all have never had that experience before, believe me, it, 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 it works exactly like that. I can testify to that. And notice I said step outside of yourself. Because I know who I am, mm -hmm. and I try to put who I am to the way in the back burner until one day it may not even exist no more. And I can look back and say, man, there yeah, I was right there. But you got to put it way in the back because who you are is what you, really what you feel. Those feelings, man, that feelings is what's really in your heart. You say, hey, the heart is, uh, what the scripture said, your heart is what? Deceitful. Above all, that's what the scripture said. But to us, the heart is the reality of, 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 of it's, it's our reality, it's who we are. And you can't change it, you can't change it, you can't change it. No, that's not. That's you mean you not, can't rely on your heart? Huh? You can't rely on your heart? No, no not when it's. Nah, I know. Yeah. I know. But that's what's in your heart, that's what they say. Right. You're just like, Psh. right. Oh, yeah. And he knows my heart. That's the problem. It would have been better if you didn't know your heart. You might have a chance, but he knows your heart and your actions are a reflection of that. It's funny how they defeat their whole <laughs> themselves when they say that. But uh, go ahead. Therefore say, thus said Yahweh Elohim, I will even gather you from the people and, and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Yisrael. So you mean tell me I'm standing here in Israel? I gotta spend all my money to try to get here, and that, and I ain't got nothing, huh? I'm uh, I, I'm I'm blessed if I'm able to rent this place that I'm living in. I'm blessed. That ain't no blessing. No, no it's no. not a blessing. He said, "I will give you the land of Yisrael." Go ahead. What I mean? I, I'm not, Verse I'm 18. Mm -hmm. okay. And they shall come here and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof and all the abominations thereof from there. So again, if I'm there, I need to be there tearing stuff up. Right? Not walking down the street. Oh, there's the temple of them. Because every religion is represented in yeah, this. That's what I was just thinking. Yeah, right. Right. Still have all these right. Exactly. There. <laughs> trying to feel exactly. Yep. And you walking down your own street, and you looking at this, this, this edifice, this edifice, and all the other tours is passing by right here, and they going, "That's beautiful." Right, click, right. click. That's beautiful. Click, click. So I said, "You'll be tearing that stuff up if you were there." Same thing about this is so contrary to what these people are doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And I will give them one heart, and I will put. A new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. Oh, that's that new covenant, y'all. We done read two passages that talks about the new covenant. The people think that we're in the new covenant now. We're not in the new covenant now. If we're in the new covenant now, we wouldn't even probably even be here. They said no, no one should teach your neighbor, but we should all know him from the least to the greatest of them. You know, so that's part of that's the new covenant right there. But here we just read the second passage about the new covenant right here. That's part of us being in our land. Wow. All right. Um verse 20. Oh, go ahead. Out of go ahead. And will give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim. Okay. Yeah, one more, three more. But as for them whose heart walks after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own head, said Yahuwah Elohim. Believe that. 
you believe that. Okay. Now let's go into uh Genesis the 15th chapter. This is that popular passage we're gonna read. And we're gonna get something else out of it. I'm telling you, man, you read certain things here, and you be like, man, I've read this a million times before, and damn, where this come from? Genesis the 15th chapter. <laughs> Watch this. Pray. This is just how powerful the scriptures are. Genesis 15 chapter. And I bet you can't nobody in here tell me how many times they've read this passage. Nobody in here can tell me how many times they read it. I bet you. <laughs> this is 15 chapter. Let's pick this up at verse uh, 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a assurity that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. And just to cut to the chase, this is not talking about now. This, this has already happened. <laughs> and if there's no other, well, it's a lot of people that shows that this had happened then. But the main thing for me, the main thing is the fact that there's only one nation that Israel was in collectively, all 12 tribes. Because the majority of Israelites on this earth right now have never even been to America. No debate, have never been to America. There's more of us in Brazil than there is here. Most of them ain't never been to America, okay? And that's just one ounce of proof. But thing is, they've got a lot of Israelites that believe that this is a, a, a applies to us, okay? And some of them are in the land and think that this applies to us. But let's let's get specific with this and see something that they don't see. Go ahead. Fourteen, and also that nation. Whom they shall serve, will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great suffering. <laughs> Verse 14. That don't apply to them. It says, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Father ain't judged this nation yet. He ain't judged this nation yet. Because when this nation is judged, they're gonna know that they've been judged. Because the father did that in Mizraim, and when they were judged, they knew that they were judged by the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. But judgment comes before they went into their land. You didn't go into your land, and then the stuff is still going on with your people in the land of their captivity. You see, that's that's deep. If he, if we're scattered and we're in all the nations, then it has to be a world war, then a world judgment, and it will be, and it absolutely. Well, that's another right, thing you know, right, but yeah, world exactly, judgment. exactly, exactly. But like I said, when you read this with understanding, you can clearly see the fallacies and what these people are trying to create in their own mind. Well, first of all, they don't get past. The 15 works. But we didn't come out with great substance, did we? Right. Well, uh, exactly. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Like I said, they don't get past the 13 verse. They stop at the 13 verse, read 400 years, and they run with it. Mm -hmm. Don't read past it. But it says, in that nation, and it's a singular nation, it's not nations plural, it's singular. Uh, whom they shall serve will I judge. And like you said, afterwards, they shall come out with great substance. Okay? And I, I, oh, yeah. It's another thing. Continue reading. Watch this. And, and you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come here again. And see, that's why you know it ain't had nothing to do with us. He's talking to Abraham. And he said to Abraham that in the fourth generation of the generation that began to be Serve, serving that other nation, the fourth generation, they're going to come right here where you're standing in the land of Canaan. Again, again, we are not no fourth generation. Okay? 
Okay, uh, so that lets you know it's talking about what happened back then. They shall come here again, again, meaning that they was already here before. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Keep that in mind. That is, it's, it's crazy how these scriptures work, but keep that part in mind. So in other words, oh man, let me ask you all this question. We go back to Mizraim and we go back to the time when yourself, when uh, we ain't going to read it though. We're going to uh, talk about when yourself had his brothers and they came back the second time because the father said, go man, we hungry, go get some more. And Simeon was like, look, that man told us straightly that if we come, we better bring our little brother. And he already got, no, not Simeon is already there in the right. right. That was uh, Yahoo, I think, that might have said that. Oh, uh, matter of fact, it may have been the oldest brother, Ray Ben, that said that. He done told us straightly that if we come back, we better have our little brother with us. And he's like, why would you even tell him that you even had a little brother? You know, so uh, they go back, and then when they come back, uh, Joseph finally meets his little brother, come out the same mother, and they go through all that, and then uh, and then evidently later on, they go back home, tell their father, "Hey, he alive," and they come back, and the Mizraim, they all happy because you know they know they got they prosperity from this Hebrew. So there's no enmity between us and Mizraim at that particular time. Joseph ruled over everybody and they plant us in the land of Goshen. Now keep in mind, our father Yaakov is there with us and we're prospering whatever. Uh, do y'all do y'all Think this is it's not a trick question. <laughs> Did the 12 sons of Israel and Israel, Jacob, did they did they know about the covenant of Abraham? Yeah. Well, the covenant of Abraham. Father made a covenant with Abraham. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. And that's correct. That is correct. That is correct. They they knew about the covenant that the father made with their grandfather. Because the sign of the covenant was the, was the circumcision, right? Right. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they knew about the covenant of Abraham, mm -hmm. and they did, they knew that Canaan was their land. Right. 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 Could they left Goshen, Mizraim, and went back to their land? No. Why do you say no? They hadn't gone through the process yet. Mm. So, mm. And that's why the people that are over there in Israel have it so hard right now because they haven't gone through the Right, 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 right. Now, but here's the truth of the matter, and you're correct. They could have, if they had wanted to, because there was nothing holding them back. But like you said, because they knew, not because they couldn't, because they were held back from it. Right. They could have been like, oh man, hey, we good? Let's, let's go on back to our land. That's our land. But they didn't. See, there's a lesson there. Oh, I see what you're saying. What am I saying? Go ahead. No, I, I, I no, I see, I see. Right, but you all understand what I'm saying. The point is, is what he said. They understood the process. They could have got all of their wealth because they, they were good in Goshen. They're like, man, look, I'm, I'm going back to my land. They, they were not like us that were really struggling and say, man, Andrea, I, I, I want to go back to Israel so bad. But I got to save up this money. I got to work overtime. That that wasn't their story. Right. They could have went to the land of Canaan any time that they wanted to. Because they remember, it wasn't no strange land to them because they were all living there in the first place. Only Joseph ended up in Mizraim. 
So what like us, like if you ain't never been there, I ain't never been there, you know, you can't really imagine what it's like. But to them, it was like this, but it's to them, like going to Atlanta, Georgia. Seriously. Because I never thought about the, 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 what he just said. So before they went into, they they all got to Nizraim because Joseph was there and it was, it was a famine in the land. Correct. So they could have went back if they wanted to, where they were before the famine, before they took all the kids. Wasn't nothing holding them back. I've never seen that. There was nothing that. to stop them from going back. I don't think they wanted to. Well, the famine well, was, the over, famine was over, over with, though. The famine was over with. They were prosperous. I see what you're saying. Yes. I had never thought about that. I like, never good. thought about that. Wow. Well, no, I mean, regardless, no matter, no matter how good you are. See, oh. here's the thing. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking like they're thinking. See, the way we think is that I'm saying we didn't know we would see you all this time. Uh, they did. Right, they did. So as a person that did, you know that see here's the thing. And, 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 okay, so y'all making me get too deep with this. Uh, I want to get too deep with this. But even though they were in Mizraim and they may have been prosperous, they were still second class citizens there. Right. Because it was abomination for them to even eat with the misery. Right. So I understand the reason. I had to go put my mind, transfix my mind back to really understand what their reality was. Right. You know, right. it was just like Oprah having a billion dollars, but she walked into a store and they'd be like, uh, we know what you know what I'm saying, and she experienced that before. You know what I'm saying? So that's the truth of the matter. They were still, no matter how. People like them. I'm sure they did. You know, they were probably just like us, you know. They probably sung, song, and entertained, and miserable fight like that. Yeah, that's a peculiar people over there, boy. They get down. But uh, check this out, bro. Uh-huh. Since you said that though, but um chapter um eighteen. Okay. So even even though they was in Goshen, that, that was still a part of they they land, right? No, that was that was Mizraim they was in. Goshen is a city of Mizraim that they were given to dwell in because it sanctified them from anybody else. But see, that's another thing. For that's another thing for Mizraim to be a farmer was an insult. It was an abom. That was a, considered. Let me see. Did I, is that here somewhere? Genesis, the uh, oh, when they ate together, no, I'm talking about the, the whole job of, 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 of growing food. Let's see if I can find that real quick. That's at the bar with when she, oh, what, what did you say that was when you was read it? Um, oh, um, yeah, explain eight, um, 18 to um, Genesis 18, Genesis oh. 15, verse 18, 15 or 18. We were, we were just at 17. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, okay, read that down. Uh, I'll read 17. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. When, when it, that, that passed between those pieces. And the same day, Yahuwah made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto your seed, have I given this land from the river of Mizraim unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kizites and the Kadamites and the Hittites and the Peritites and the Rephaims and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. Mm -hmm. So, no, I'm trying to find this. This is in like 46. I know I read this before. Where, oh, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Mm -hmm. This is 46 chapter. This is, well, I knew that's why it's going to be too hard to read it, but it's cool. This is 42nd chapter. 42nd or 40, 40, 46. Okay. I'm sorry, 46. This is 46 and verse 26. 26. Uh -huh. 46 and verse 26. Okay. All the souls that came with 
Jacob or Jacob into Mishraim, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's sons, wives, all the souls were three score and six. And the sons of Yosef, which were born, which were born him and Mishraim, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Yaakov, which came into Mishraim, were threescore and ten. And he sent Yahuda before him unto Yosef to direct his face unto Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. And Yosef made ready his chariot and went up to meet Yashrael, his father, to Goshen and to present himself unto him. He fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Wow. And Yashrael said unto Yosef, Now let me die, since I have seen your face, because you are yet alive. Go ahead, I'm good. And Yosef said unto his brethren and unto his father's house, I will go up and show Paharov or Pharaoh, <laughs> and say unto him, My brethren and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are come unto me. Right. And the men are shepherds for their trade, for their trade hath been to feed cattle, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? That you shall say, Thy servants' trade hath been about cattle from our youth even until now both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination unto mm -hmm. the unto the Egyptians or Israelites. See that? So that was their spirits. They were like a second-class citizenship in Mizraim just because of the way Mizraim thought. So they had to deal with a certain dynamic of racism Second during that time, mm -hmm. even before the Pharaoh that knew not the king or Joseph came and really put put them to hell. But just like what my brother said, good point, is that they understood the process. See, so even whatever they were dealing with, they could just say, man, we got to leave here. We got to go back to our land, Canaan. They understood the process. So they understood what the father had already told their father. And so again, like I always use this again, the father's time is not our time. These brothers never went back to their land in power. Ain't that something? Land named after them. It's like I got a land that's named after me, and I'm not even able to go there. I got to stay here and deal with all the stuff that these heathens do to me. See, so you already got the example from our forefathers. So what it is that we supposed to be doing that's different from them? We have to wait for the process. It's like they waited for the process. That's the, the father gave me so much more than all the time I used to talk about this all the time and never even uh, talk this. But seriously, though, I mean, again, if this wasn't line upon line, precept upon precept, I couldn't, I couldn't teach this. Right. Could, couldn't even teach it, okay? I wouldn't be here. There it is. Hallelujah. Okay. But, uh, all right, so watch this. Uh, I ain't going to say watch this. Y'all already know this, but Luke 21. <laughs> Luke 21. Now, with this lesson, we don't read, read this passage all the time, but this specific lesson right here, it becomes this much more magnified. Luke 21 and uh, go right to the point, 22nd verse, Luke 21, 22. Luke 21st chapter, 22nd verse. Okay. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give sucks in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay, now check this out. 
You're only going to be one or the other. You're either going to be in all nations in the cap captivity, or you're going to be in Jerusalem with the Gentiles trying down Jerusalem. You ain't supposed to be in Jerusalem. If you are Israelite, you should both be in the captivity of all nations. Where he had placed you, that's where we're supposed to be at, in the captivity. Anywhere else but in Jerusalem. Because the Gentiles have tried that down. And here's a, a trip that I think he said. It says, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. I want to hear what you was about to say. It was just interesting. You know, I know someone, and they believe that, yeah, people are there, are the two. Exactly. Yeah. But the thing about it, so they knew what? Was it 1948? 1948. Well, my thing is, tell me, you know, that people are not understanding about, you know, until the time the daytime be fulfilled. But that time is supposed to be. Time, right, and it says it in this verse, right, 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 yeah, the next verse says that, it says, uh, what that next uh, verse says, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of, of heaven shall be shaken, mm -hmm. and then shall and you know, and, and I like you said that, Cynthia, because actually, what he's talking about is the heavens roll back like a scroll, because that's when the fear comes. We 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 just got finished dealing with that on the rapture thing. It sits sealed, like you said, the heavens roll back like a scroll, and then every rich man. Poor, whatever, whatever king, captain, the mighty man, look up and they like, hide us, set on the rock to hide us from the face of him that sit on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. But one other thing I wanted to get out of that, though, is those that it says again, until the time of the Gentile be fulfilled, the Gentiles have a time appointed by the Father. Genesis 15 chapter. For you can't come back because the iniquity of the Amorites have not come in. You see how the father did that? Hit his time, not our time. You go back to Jesus for death. Like, look, they're going to come back here again, but not now because the iniquity of the Amorites have not come yet before. Amorites is in the, in the Holy Land right now. I'm talking about then. And they live in their life in, in the Holy Land. They are trodden down the Holy Land. The same way the Gentiles would later try down the Holy Man. You ain't supposed to be there. Right, right. Let the Amorites do their thing. Let them Gentiles over there do their thing. They doing what the prophecy said that they was going to do. It's about you getting yourselves together. Simple as that. Simple as that. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Huh? And that that's that right there is the key. Yeah. That right there is the key. Forget about everything else. That right there is the key. And we ain't talking about individually. We're talking about as a nation. Right, right. right now, collectively, there's more of us hoping that Biden will be the one. <laughs> Biden will be the one. That 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 is that's detests me so much in my spirit. It detests me so much. In my, and I, I praise the father that he gave this country Obama, not for one term, but for two terms. Mm -hmm. If that ain't supposed to change your whole mind about voting, I don't know what should have done it. When Obama got out of office, you should have just been like, okay, I need to think of something else. Because <laughs> this vote thing ain't quite working out. Huh? Find a hobby or something. Man, something. This, this boat thing, I don't, I don't think this is what my forefathers had in mind. <laughs> wow. That's how I broke up with LeBron. Huh? I broke up with LeBron. Why you break up with LeBron? Because all he's about is voting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but in fairness, though, I mean, he's if, hot. if you don't, <laughs> no, no. 
No. No. Zero. <laughs> we know the girl. truth. We we know the truth because y'all y'all don't got no sense. I'm gonna kick y'all up out this class. Y'all keep with that foolishness. Oh, dang, dang. I have something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs>
in other lesson, I prove that Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov knew Yahoo's name. Proved it yeah. clearly. Mm -hmm. But Shemai is asking, What is your name? Come on. He, he was us. Yeah. They were all us. You see what I'm saying? See, when you get, you got to put yourself right there in that time and try to get all of their mindset into what's going on to really comprehend how they thought. There's some that in that time probably did like a few of the things that was going on. You know, Joseph living large and they, but they were still second class citizens in the land knowing that they were the son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that my land, I could literally walk to my land. My land. See, I don't care how prosperous you might be somewhere else, it still ain't your land. But I always, uh -huh. so much, yeah, but I always look at, say for instance, you look at it, think of something like
which is the main thing that kept them there. Because again, we see they were second class citizens. Ms. Mm -hmm. couldn't even eat with them. They thought that what they did was abominable. So look, let me tell you something. And I and I like she used the example of Vegas. She don't like Vegas. Mm -hmm. I love Vegas. Mm -hmm. Put me in the middle of Vegas, man. Y'all might not want to know who I am. <laughs> but uh but if the inhabitants of Las Vegas are going to insult me enough, it's not going to be that nice to me. Mm -hmm. You know, you want a job? I'm not going to give you no good job. I'm going to give you the second, third class job. And don't ask me to eat with you because you were vulnerable to me. Don't, don't even suggest that. I'm not going to want to be there. I don't, I, I, there ain't that much gambling in the world. There ain't that much many showgirls in the world. You see, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, I get deep when I try to put myself in that place to understand that. And if you ever been to a place where you were insulted to that, ain't nothing else there for you. You gonna be like, look, they got that. You know, it, I, it, that's that's really the reality of it. So we as a people are just like our forefathers after 400 years. We're, we're, we have become used to being second class now. We have gotten used to being stopped by police, racial profile. We've gotten used to so much stuff that the average person of another nation just could not see that as being a rea reality. We're desensitized. So it's just a different mindset, you know. And well, it kind of was back even in Harriet Tubman's time. That mindset was there. Because okay. She says she could have freed a lot more if they knew they were slaves. Right. Right. So they kind of had that. Same right. Mindset. And we're not talking about Africans that just came off the boat. Because right. an African like Kuta Kente that came off the boat, he know what being free was like. Yeah. And what left? And, right. Huh? And what left? Right. Yeah. And see, if that Kuta Kente was talking to us, We'll be scared to listen to the words he would be saying. Talk to me about that. You know what I'm saying? He talked about he got a language, he got a, a real name, and all of that. We'd have been like, or oh, we'd have been mocking him, dude. Like, 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 Fritler called him Guinea Man. Guinea Man. You know, like, you don't, you don't know nothing. Oh, oh, because he couldn't speak the English language. But we considered him second class citizen. But we um, ain't never known what being free was, and this dude knew what being free was all about. And we think it was crazy that you would even try to get the chains off of you and do all this off the chains. What's wrong with you? You see, you see it's all about the mentality. Understand the mentality of the different people, where they were from, why they think like that. So I'm just saying that to say again, going back to, real quick, going back to LeBron James, have mercy on him. That's, that's the only thing that he was taught. That's the only thing all our people taught, that voting is the way. Forgive and them, for they do not know. Forgive them, for they do not know what they are, you know? Going into these churches, we discovered that that's a curse. Deuteronomy 28, because before we used to be like, why are you still doing, why are you, why are you? it's a curse. Yeah. You, you're still up under that curse. Yeah. Okay. 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 Could you do me a favor, though? Walk up, yeah, walk up, but I won't. Yeah. I'm gonna make her work for her comments. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'm not from here originally. When I came here like '99, everyone was like, "Where are you from? Where are you from?" And I'm like, Colorado. And they're like, there's white people in Colorado. You know, and it, it was like, okay. They you asked you if there were white people in Colorado. Like, there's black people. Oh, that's a good question. How about to say? Anyway, <laughs> but people ask me that. It's like, oh, I'm still in Colorado. Like, I still get asked that question. Like, where are you from? 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 Where are um, a lot of people like them. Um, they, 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 there's a lot of military families here. Mm -hmm. They went to college. Right. Um, I'm from Denver, but 
I noticed something when I came here back in 99. I would look at different people, um, black people, and I would notice this like oppression, like mm -hmm. this mindset. And my family, when they come and visit, they notice that same mindset. Right. And when my father comes here, you met my dad. Right. He's not like other black men that are here. And so people, they're like, where are you guys from? Like, where are you from? Where are you from? And they're always saying that to us because there is a different mindset here in the South. Mm -hmm. Black people act differently here right. than they do out west or up in New York. Or right. Yes, yeah, different, right? And, you know, unless and people that don't leave, you know, the North Side, people that don't leave Jacksonville, correct. they will never know right. that there is a different mindset. Right, exactly. And That's that correct. is a type of bondage just uh -huh. living here in Jacksonville. Right. Uh, Right. Wow. And that's true. And and one of the things he said that is so true. I think I I don't know if I told you I told somebody that that people that live, like you say, they live on the west side, they ain't never even been on the north side or Arlington. Uh, they can't tell you nothing about something. Well, truth huh? be told, you got people from New York the same way. Yeah. That don't leave their boroughs. They don't leave their boroughs. Yeah. And that's the world today. Yeah. 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 They don't leave Brooklyn, they don't leave Harlem, they don't leave New York. So, yo, so, so just like I'm saying, you know, at the end of the day, you have to understand That's where true. people come from to understand the truth of their mentality. Because if you don't understand where they come from, it's going to seem somewhat even offensive to, to, to the way that certain people think. That's just, that just the way it is, all right? All right. Give me a time real quick. Four thirty-seven. Oh, I didn't even know that. Oh, no, no, no. okay. Let's go to one more place, y'all. And we're going to close out. Man, that's a little long. Let me see where we're going. Wait, where did we end? 26. Luke 21, 22 through 26. Right. All right. We're going to finish close it out at uh, Isaiah, the first chapter. Gonna do part two next Shabbat. Isaiah one. This is also the uh, the definition of desolation here. Isaiah the first chapter, and uh, start this at verse one. Let's start this at verse one. Isaiah one and one. All right. Isaiah 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Yahuda and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Yahum, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Yahuda. Right. So Isaiah is prophesying during the last. Kings of Yahuda. Guess to put that time frame in perspective. Go ahead. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For Yahuwah has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Yashrael does not know. My people do not consider. Right, you know, and unless our people are taught, they're not going to know. They're only going to know what already in their head. Go ahead. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken Yahuwah. They have provoked the Holy One of Yashrael unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Right. So if you walk up into a church and you stand up and say, y'all are a sinful people, how are you going to call us sinful when we sit up here in church? Right? But the definition of sin has not changed. They just don't understand what sin is. To them, they are the most holiest <laughs> and righteous people ever. Go ahead. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and, and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land strangers devour it in your presence. 
and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. See that? That's what desolate is. Desolate don't mean empty. It means that you're not there. Right. It's overthrown by strangers. Okay, so that's the definition of that. And with that, y'all, that is just the first part of uh, Israel. You got Israelites. You got no business being in Israel. Uh, oh, real quick. You know, I, I started to name this uh, a more political correct thing. Like, is it okay for Israelites to be in Israel or no? Or something more pleasing. I say, you know what? When people see the title of this, they're going to already know what it is. And uh, either they disagree, hopefully they'll look at it line upon line, piece up upon piece up, or they want to just stand in their ignorance. Right. A lot of people, you know, like even in the, le the rapture lesson that we did earlier, got a few people get online, they just see what the title is. Oh, he ain't going to come for you before the tribulation. <laughs> and then they comment off of the title instead right. of just sitting there and listening to what's being presented. But it's okay. A servant of Yah is always gonna hear and uh what's the what's the verse I'm talking about? They're gonna hear matter hear out a matter first. Right. Yeah. Right. Or try the spirit. Yeah, I was because we
Shirt on the list, and I went and got it. Right, I went and got it. And we dressed up for the premiere and everything. So the whole story of that. But uh, but this shirt cost all uh, I'll say about thirteen dollars. Thirteen, yeah. Catherine, good. Oh, and get with. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Man, look, you go to the mall, those things, man, like $300. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to go put down on me one. I was like, yeah. Yeah, Wish got them, man. You're going to see me coming here with a lot. I got quite a few stuff from Wish, man. Man, I had a gang of course. But it's like, I can't do about it right now. Yeah. Got to write stuff down. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it right now. I'll find you how to eat my book, man. All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.